AMA, we're on section 5.5, Properties of Logarithms. Uh, we've got some learning targets, but I just want to know that as we're working with properties of logarithms, there are really three main properties. I've highlighted them right here that we're going to be focusing on today. If we had the log base A of M times N, and there's multiplication in here, we can, for step number five here, make this the log base A of M plus the log base A of N. So we see multiplication in here. We can write two logs on the right side as an addition and separating the M and the N. Uh, the next one down below, if we were dividing M divided by N, the log base A of M divided by N, this would become the log base A of M minus the log base A of N. Now we have subtraction. Look at the right side, you can see there are two logs. We'd write L-O-G twice. Uh, so there are times when we're going to want to go from one log to two. That's expanding. Uh, we can also go from the right side to the left side. That's condensing, writing as a single log. This is bidirectional. And then uh, number seven, this property that we're really focusing on today, says that if we've got log base A of M up to the R power, we can take that exponent of r and drop it down in front as a coefficient. That would become r times the log base a of m. So on this video, we want to be good with uh, our time here. The directions are to write a logarithmic expression as a sum of logarithms. Take this one log and uh, turn it into an addition. Now, of course, this is going to really be property number five because we can see that we are multiplying two things. So our M is more or less like this X and our N is this radical. So what will happen is this will become the log base A following step number five up here, the log base A of X plus the log base A of, I'm going to combine a couple steps right now. Yes, it's the square root of x squared plus 1, but x squared plus 1 is really being raised up to the 1 half power. I hope you remember a square root can always be expressed as a 1 half power. The second part of our problem, we're supposed to express all powers as factors. That's really property number 7. Uh, that we've highlighted up above. Any exponent inside of the log can be brought down. So this becomes log base A of X plus, I can bring that one half down in front, and that's one half log base A of X squared plus one. So when we have this multiplication of two terms inside of a log, we can use property number five and write two logarithms that are added together. Uh, we can similarly use property number six and write as a subtraction or a difference of logs. You can see this uh, at the top of the screen. We've got property number six shown. M is pretty much is your x squared. Your n is down below here. We're going to have natural log of x squared minus the natural log of x minus one all to the third. So that's really using that top property that we saw at uh, number six. But again, we need to express all powers as factors. So we're gonna take the two and bring it down. And uh, we'll have two natural log of x minus three natural log of x minus one. By the way, uh, you might have noticed some inequalities, like in the first problem, x was greater than 0, and this one, it's x greater than 1. That's just to guarantee that our final answer is going to have positive numbers inside of the logs. Uh, if x is greater than 1, both of these logs have positive arguments. Arguments are the expressions inside of the log. Okay, well... So very often, oh, what you're going to see is actually uh, you have to do multiple steps. You're going to have to use uh, both addition and subtractions. Now, 
I'm going to write at the top the log base A of M times N. Of course, that was really log base A of M plus log base A of N. We got your multiplication linked to addition. We also had the log base A of M all over N. This becomes the log base A of M minus the log base A of N. So I hope you can see a fraction. That's definitely what's going to jump out. You've got your numerator, you've got your denominator. Now, from the very beginning then, I hope you're thinking of that uh, you know, second property that I just wrote up. Uh, your M is more or less up on top, your N is down below. So I'm going to use that subtraction property, log base A, and here we'll have the square root of x squared plus 1 minus the log base A. And inside here we've got quite a bit, x cubed, and here's your x plus 1 to the fourth. But as we're looking at that second term, I'm sure you're going to notice, hey, look inside here, there's really multiplication involved. And multiplication is that very first property that we were talking about. So uh, what we can certainly do is, you know, just like in the other problem, we can make a square root of one-half power. We could have even done that earlier. I've got my minus here. I'm going to put some brackets, though, and we can see that this is going to become the log base A of x to the third plus the log base A of x plus 1 to the fourth. And uh, at this point, you know, you can bring this one half down out in front. But tell you what, I'm going to distribute a negative to both of those logs here. And the fact that there's a negative in front indicates that that would be coming from the denominator. As you're expanding this, and it's so critical to hear this, when you're expanding and you see minuses in front of your logs in your final answer, that's indicative that those expressions came from the denominator. So we don't want to forget that. Now don't forget we've got our powers, so I'm going to write a final answer here. We've got a 1 half log base A of x squared plus 1. But now I'm going to bring down that 3. We're going to say minus 3 log base a of x. Then we're going to say minus, well, then we're going to bring down that 4. And we'll say 4 log base a of x plus 1. This is going to be your final answer. And then you are good to go. Let's keep going. Uh, here we have a problem where, you know, our directions are to write as a single logarithm. The thing is, could we condense? First of all, working backwards, look at any coefficients and bring them up. This will become the log base A of 7. This becomes the log base A of 3 to the 4th. Now, 3 to the 4th, you could work out very quickly, is really just 81. But in addition of two logs, we may condense into one log and multiply their insides. We're really going to this top property right here. We're working from the right side to the left side. And we all can quickly work out 7 times 81 would be 567. So it's log base A of 567. Uh, tell you what, I'm going to bring this two-thirds up here. We'll have natural log of 8 to the two-thirds. We'll work that out in a minute. 5 squared is 25, and 25 minus 1 is actually 26. I mean 24, pardon me. 25 minus 1, of course, is 24. Uh, but 8 to the two-thirds. Guys, uh, I hope you remember that this denominator is really telling you what kind of a root you're working with. It's the cube root of 8 squared, and uh, the cube root of 8 is a 2, and 2 squared is a 4. What are we getting at? This whole big mess right here is really just a 4. 
So I've got the natural log of 4 minus the natural log of 24. I'm going to use that subtraction property and condense, make this one logarithm by taking my first argument divided by the second. Now 4 divided by 24, of course, is 1 sixth, or 1 over 6, and we're good to go. Now, by the way, one little thing that you should be aware of. I do want to come back to this. 1 over 6, you could also think of as 6 to the negative 1. That's a fine answer. That, that's definitely okay. But if you thought of that as 6 to the negative 1, you could bring that negative out in front as a power. So here's another answer that you could have. Okay, uh, we're getting there. We're moving right along. Uh, log base 2 of 7. Wow, tell you what, let's get your calculator out. And uh, let's go to the math button and go all the way down to log base. Uh, we've said before that there's only the natural log and log buttons on the faceplate. But if you needed to get a different base of a log, you could do it this way. And you can see we're going to four decimal places, 2.8074 when you round. 2.8074. Look at that. Okay, so finally in this last section, uh, given that the natural log of 2 is A and the natural log of 3 is B, could we use properties of logs to simplify in terms of A and B, just having A and B in the answer. Well, natural log of 1.5, I hope you think of 1.5 as 3 over 2. And now I'm going to use my fraction, that division property. This is natural log of 3 minus the natural log of 2. Natural log of 3 we saw is B. Natural log of 2 is A. Answer, B minus A. 0 0.5, well, my goodness, that's really 1 over 2. We just saw a moment ago that we could write that as 2 to the negative 1. And that uh, problem with the 1, 6, I can bring that negative down in front. Negative 1 times the natural log of 2. What's natural log of 2, though? Oh, it's A. This would be negative A. Finally, we come over here to uh, natural log of E over 6. We could say this is the natural log of E minus the natural log. Now the 6 is really 2 times a 3. Now natural log of E, I want to tell you, is actually very, very special. There's a property of logs that we have right here. Um, log base A of A to the R. It's uh, as if these just cancel out with the log and you get an R. If you've got natural log of e, that's log base e of e to the 1. That wipes out just to a 1. So that's kind of nice. That's that property that we have here. So this natural log of e, like I said, it's log base e of e to the 1. That really just becomes a 1. Now what? Uh, here I've got this multiplication. So I'm going to say minus with brackets. I'll say natural log of 2 plus natural log of 3. Now the natural log of 2, we just saw a moment ago, is A. Natural log of 3 is a B. Might as well just distribute this negative all the way through. Final answer, 1 minus A minus B.